Yo, what's up everyone? Hope you're having a great day today. This video will be focused on the gearing process in Arcage, and it'll pretty much be broken down into how to gear when you're leveling all the way up to 50, what gear to go for after you finally get to level 50 and have that initial quest gear, and then after the Aurora opens up, what gear you should be aiming for. So first, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the gearing system in general. So as you know, in Arc Age Classic, they have decided to bring back the Obsidian system. And I don't know if you played Arc Age Unchained, since that was pretty much the last opening or server for Arc Age. They had this thing called Haram gear, and that kind of streamlined gearing to make it pretty, pretty easy and understandable. But in Arc Age Classic, it'll be a little bit more player choice because now uh, since they brought back obsidian you have the choice of either going crafted gear or obsidian gear so a lot of the choices is made up to the player but I'm just going to go ahead and show you some of the options you have but pretty much the questing all the way up to 50 the gearing is streamlined there's a few quests that you want to do to get this gear and then also after you finally hit level 50 and get the said gear uh, you're pretty much dungeon farming uh, GHA and you're also hassle weapon grinding for your weapons and accessories um, accessories are a little bit special but we'll go ahead and talk about that later in the video so let's get down to it now as you can see we are in Hasla which is on the east side of the continent this will be the same for both the east and the west faction so don't worry too much about this you'll eventually come over here as the west side and the same goes for the east side because you end in the uh, Arcassi Ridgelands. But let's go ahead and get started. So you want to come to this NPC. Their name is Soyo. And they have the quest for either the bow, shield, loot, and great club. Now you want to make sure you pick according to your class, of course, since this is a one-time reward. But this is where you would get these said items. Now for the next NPC, it's also in Hasla in the uh, in Gale Garden as well. I forgot to mention that. But in Gale Garden, you also come over to Overseer Hitchy while you're doing your main quest line. Or if you finished and you didn't do any uh, side quests whatsoever, you still want to do this to get your initial gear. And you come talk to uh, Hitchy, and they give you the leather, cloth, or plate upper pieces. But that will get your uh, upper pieces situated. The last quest line in Hasla that you want to do for the rest of your gear and this is primarily for the one-handed sword the two-handed odachi and the staff is you come here to the cursed village and you come and talk to maru and it starts with chasing rumors i believe there's three quests in this quest line so you just go ahead and keep doing these quests until you finally get the uh identifier for the uh nodachi staff or the one-handed sword and that uh ends the quest lines for hasla so a little side note, after you finish your uh, Hasla quests, if you are or by any chance playing the east side, since you'll probably start on the Hasla quests, uh, there is a portal to get to the west side. So uh, it's over here in Hasla in the, what is this called? Vero, the main city of Vero. And you just come right over here and you interact with the world gate. It's free, not to pay anything. And then you're already in Carcassi to start the next quest line for your final pieces of gear. To go ahead and wrap up the quest lines, you come over here to Carcassi Ridgelands. The first place you want to go to is located in Iona, and this is for the cloth, leather, plate, bottoms. And the quest line starts with Prowse. You come, you do the capture a Wormkin quest. Um, after you finish this quest, well, let me go ahead and do this quest real quick so we can see where the next quest line pops up. So I want to talk a little bit about the early bird system. And by the way, this quest line, there was two quests for Prowse. Uh, this system is amazing, especially since the XP rates are boosted. You're not really going to need too much extra XP to finally hit 50. Uh, you can just kill a couple mobs. I have this halfway done. Then you can go ahead and just turn this right back into the same NPC you took it from. And I'll go ahead and uh, complete early, which is really nice. I think like this is the only MMO that I've played personally that has a system like this. I can't believe I haven't played another MMO with a system like this. <laughs> but uh, that's a little bit off topic, but just want to talk about that a little bit. So 
So the NPC that ends up having the last quest for the gear pieces we are looking for is Jayon. So you come down here and you talk to them. And there you go. You have the cloth, leather, or plate lowers. And this should round out all your pieces. And the last piece in Carcassia Ridgelands should be the helmet. And let's go ahead and check out where that is now. And now to get your final piece, which should be the headpiece, you want to come over here to Dragon War Fortress. And I believe this is two quests, but we're going to go ahead and find out right now. And uh, it starts with the, the Minotaur. This quest will be to kill a Minotaur. So let's go ahead and do that quest and see what the next quest is that gives us the piece. When you go ahead and finish that first quest, the last quest appears. It's right over here, it's still in Dragon Roar Fortress. And it's by uh, from the Elder Minotaur. And the quest is called the Shaman of Dragon Roar. You go ahead and accept this quest, complete this quest. And then you finally have your full left side of gear and you're ready to go. You finally completed hitting level 50. You finally completed uh, the side quest to get all your initial questing gear and some of your weapons. What is next? Well, what is next is you come down here to the bottom right of Hassle, and this is what everyone likes to call the Hassle weapon grind. Now, why do you come here? Well, it's simple. Every time you kill a mob, you're guaranteed to get a token drop, and I'll go ahead and show you the tokens. And what you would do is you come to this bench and you decide to pick one of these weapons based on your class. So let's go ahead and say, uh, since I'm a dark runner, let's go ahead and say two handed axe for some reason. I decide to go, uh, so I had to go two-handed and I want to go with the axe. So what does that mean for me? Every time I kill a mob, I'm getting one of these tokens. Uh, a token of uh, honor, loyalty, conviction, courage, fortitude, sacrifice, and compassion. So what happens is, after I get 150 of these tokens, I would come to this bench. I would just go ahead and make a really good beginning weapon to start farming the dungeons later. Which is also related to... Uh, the gear progression. Now, a little bit about this zone. This zone tends to be very PvP heavy. Uh, it'll be very, very contested at the beginning of the game. Uh, the zone does go into peace. As you can see right now, it's just intention one. So uh, PvP is active right now. And eventually, if enough people fight in this area, It'll eventually be sent to war, and then after war is done, it'll go into peace. So if you're not really too fond of PvP, you can always decide to come here when it's in peace and farm it in peace. A lot of people do that, and that's usually when it's the most packed. But uh, it's very fun, very, very fun early game PvP to just come here right after you're 50 and start grinding a weapon. Now, there's also some ways, for some reason, if you get super unlucky in RNG... There is a way to craft a specific stone. Um, it's not really too important. You will eventually get 150 of your stone to get your uh, your rare weapon. And then, of course, after your rare, you go arcane, which will also cost some gilded dust. But gilded dust is very easily obtained by just uh, grinding down some gilded stars. Not too hard. And then, eventually, you cap out a heroic. In total, that is 300... Is that 300, 200, 500, and where's the other one? And 150. So that is 650 stones in total. A little bit of a grind, not too bad. It'll probably take a couple of hours now that you got your hassle weapon. And uh, you can start after you get your blue weapon, of course. This will start making the GHA grind a little bit easier and I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about that now. Here we are at GHA. This is located on the Nguyen continent also known as the west side in the top. It's very easy to get to dungeons in this game. You can always just open up your teleport book, click on any one. I haven't been to KC before but I can already go ahead and open up a teleport there. It's a really nice uh, your greater dungeons, I believe, have two daily entries, and I think your regular dungeons, if I'm not wrong, has five. Yeah, five. So perfect. Um, but this is where you'll be spending a lot of your time getting your left side gear increased. Uh, it's very easy, very streamlined. You just come to this bench. Um, each boss drops, uh, or doesn't always drop, but it has a chance to drop your uh, your gear. And depending on uh, what class you're playing, you would either pick leather, cloth, or plate. 
I'm playing Dark Runner, so let's go ahead and take a look at leather. Um, the bosses, I believe, have a drop. Uh, sorry, a chance to drop the piece all the way from arcane to unique. So if it drops a unique, that's awesome. Very uh, easy step to go from unique to celestial, and uh, you pretty much upgrade your gear by using these abyssal shards, these eternal summers, and these winter chills. They also drop in the greater dungeons, not only GHA but greater KC, greater Hadir farm, whichever you're farming. But the gear that mostly um, that mostly everybody uses is the GHA gear, since they're all pretty good. They have some pretty good uh, stat lines. Like let's look at leather for example. You got crit damage from the three set. From the four set, you have PVE damage reduction, which is really good for grinding and farming, since you'll pretty much be killing mobs the whole time at this uh, state of Arcage Classic. And then you have the five set um, piece, which reduces all received damage. Really nice clutch skill, and then. You also have the 7 set, which is just pretty much attack speed. Uh, good stats all around. Very good for archer. Still good for melee. Uh, if you're a dark runner, I highly suggest you wearing leather armor. Of course, you can always go plate. Plate's not bad. Just more focused on defensive stats. But it does give you more strength, which is what mainly a dark runner uses. But with that aside, this is exactly a... This is the way to finally get your... Sort of your end game for the first 14 days of Arcage Classic gear. Um, at this point, the end game is technically crafted gear, but most people will be just opting to use the first 14 days of the money making phase and waiting for Obsidian, since Obsidian is the more popular choice. But if you are doing crafted gear, you can also start farming your um, farming your life skills for crafting and. Uh, Ranking up leather work or mother work, whatever your uh, whatever gear you decide to use, and start crafting. Uh, let's say something like probably towards the end of the 14 days, you can be close to crafting Ethereum gear. But I highly suggest you just go ahead and go for the GHA gear. But of course, if you plan on doing the life skill for uh, leather work, you can always just start crafting that type of gear. People are gonna need that gear anyways for uh, mana wisps, so you can always list it on the market later, and people will be breaking that gear down for mana wisps. A side note, there are some, uh, I'll call them, uh, item equips, where, uh, as you can see on my bar, I have my, uh, necklace, my bar, and if I click Alt-W, it'll just switch to my necklace, and now it's on. And, uh, a good example of this is the Halsey necklace from the Proven Warrior Bench. Um, having this on my bar is an active, so when I click Alt-2, I get a protective shield for three seconds. And a very popular, um, very popular active, which is very useful for hassle weapon grinding, and not only hassle weapon grinding, just for the whole game really, is the uh, monstrous desire. Now, getting this, I believe it also drops in the dungeon, but um, most people will end up just crafting this. And uh, well, yes, you you uh, it does drop in the dungeon. You have to get the arcane desire, and you can craft that into the monstrous desire. And what the monstrous desire does, it um, when you use the active, you restore mana. It just helps with uh, maintaining mana. And uh, if for some reason, uh, or not for some reason, if you do not run the Oromancy tree, you don't have access to meditate. So you're pretty much playing your flute for mana. But this is also another good source of obtaining mana. So I highly suggest you try and grab this if you can. I mean, you'll pretty much be farming GHA, so. Maybe everybody in your party can possibly get one in the 14 days. But this is a very good pickup. There's also some other um, specific like weapon actives, but uh, those are more niche to your class. And I encourage you to check it out and see if you want any more of these from any of the dungeons. I also wanted to mention that uh, doing your greater dungeons, you can come to these boards and take these quests before you enter the dungeons. Uh, pretty good to do. Gives uh, adventure growth stones, extra abyssal shards to craft your armor, uh, mismite stones for your weapons. Very useful. And I believe this one's also a quest as well. Yeah. So you want to just go ahead and grab these before you enter any of your greater dungeons. Uh, just extra materials, extra XP, all around good. Around this point, you should finally have your GHA gear, seven pieces. You should have your hassle weapon. At around either arcane or heroic after farming for a little bit 
Now what is also next? I want to talk a little bit about accessories in this point of the game. Uh, it's a little bit special and kind of hard since uh, it depends on the player base and who is crafting. Uh, I'll go ahead and check the marketplace to see if anyone has any accessories that are like on the marketplace. Okay, perfect. So there are some accessories on the marketplace. Now, around this point, um, I'm pretty sure these are people who just listed the Ethereums that we got for free from the closed beta, but um, around this point, you'll probably start seeing, I believe, like Artificer's accessories, maybe some Magnificent, and I want to talk a little bit about those. So as you can see, every accessory has a different equip effect, and these equip effects are pretty good. Um, when you're making lower tiered accessories, um, you're not really buying them for the stat points because the stat points are negligible. You'll probably start seeing artifices, rings, necklaces, uh, earrings, things like that on the marketplace. Um, they're not amazing for your main stat, but what you're really going for is these equip effects. Things like attack speed, ignore defense, max health, magic defense, etc, etc. So that's probably where you'll be at in the point. Um, they should be super cheap. They should be... Well, I can't say since uh, the server is very different than the rest, but from the other times I've played, they're pretty dirt cheap compared to the amount of income you're making at this time of the game. And that's pretty much what your um, your five accessories will end up being. Just uh, artificers are magnificent. Um, highly suggest trying to get them cheap. There's no point to overspend at this point in the game. They're kind of just, you know, you just slap on some extra effects. And at this point, after you get that, your gear is good to go and you are ready, waiting for Aurora. Before I forget, this is also another accessory, and it's the Yinny Ring. Uh, your healer in your group is probably crying for you to help them farm it. <laughs> it's pretty good for you to get as well as a DPS. It's, uh, I believe, skill damage and also healing power, which is why your healer is nudging you on the back to help them grind for it. It's a very good ring to get. Um, I would highly suggest you have it in one of your accessory slots. It's a very good ring. Um, if you're melee DPS and you can somehow get two Gale rings, it's not too important because uh, defense pen is very, very good. But uh, it's still a good ring nonetheless to have. You'll be uh, getting it anyways. At the end of any greater dungeon, I believe, it has a chance to drop this stone orb. And I'll probably go ahead and grab a picture and overlay it on the screen so you can see what it is. And there's a whole entire quest line for it. Uh, that, that's, that can be like a 20 minute video. There's tons of videos and guides on the internet about it already. I don't, I don't think I need to make another one. And I kind of really don't. <laughs> but uh, go ahead and look that up and see if you're interested in it. Um, highly suggest you do it, at least for the healer in your group. They will be a very happy camper. And they will heal you, of course. And heal you a bit more. 2.5% uh, healing power is pretty good when you get it up to unique and you also get skill damage from that So it's not a bad ring in general to have as a to have as something before you farm the dream ring, which is a That's like a that's a super end game ring But I'll go ahead and talk about it now once again like the any ring. It's a whole entire quest line uh, TLDR you're gonna do 100 Serpentis runs and 100 Dehuda runs and you're gonna hate yourself you're gonna do it anyways. It's, it is the best ring in the game. You need to have that ring <laughs> if you do, if you plan on playing this game for the long term. Um, go ahead and look up a guide on that and check it out. But uh, it's nothing you need to worry about at the beginning of the game, or at least for the first fourteen days. Um, I believe you can start it. I'm not sure on that. Um, the questline might begin in Aurora, so obviously you wouldn't be able to do it for the first 14 days, but if it's like a drop from a dungeon or something, you can definitely start doing it. I would have to look up a guide and really tell you um, exactly where it starts, but I'm not going to bother mentioning that because that's like a super endgame ring. Like, super, super endgame. So uh, you can decide how hardcore you're playing and decide if you want to go ahead and make that one of your goals. Go ahead and look it up. And it's called the uh, the Dream Ring. Just type in Celestial Dream Ring in Google Arcage, and you'll find the whole quest line. 
Now in this next part for this video, in this segment, I want to go into crafted gear versus obsidian gear. Now, of course, both crafted gear and obsidian gear are great. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the crafted gear first. If you are a life skiller and if you're deciding to be like a leather worker because you want to go eventually Ionad gear, um, the best part is that you would just slap on the good pieces of gear that you make for yourself. Like, let's say, um, for example, I don't remember all the set pieces, but Flame is not an awful uh, set for melee for like a Dark Runner because you get a increased crit damage and in the seven set you get increased attack by a 7%, which is really good. Um, you go ahead and you start crafting these pieces and you just slap them on. Now, the best part about um, a Ethereum gear, I can take this piece off and still sell it to the market. It doesn't become bound to your character. And that's kind of the allure of crafted gear. You can always like trade it, which is really nice. But obsidian gear is a bit different. Once you have the gear, the gear is bound to you. Once you equip it, you can um, trade it. So that's kind of like the caveat and downside of obsidian gear. But obsidian gear usually does has the, the better equip effect because each slot has an equip effect. For example, my helmet, it's giving me 9.8 melee attack. And then let's go ahead and go down to the boots. The boots give me parry rate. And each piece of, um, of obsidian gear has a special effect like this. But um, this is where player choice becomes a very big part of the game. And uh, you don't necessarily have to go full obsidian gear. You can actually pick five pieces for the set effect for like Delphinet or Ethereum. Or, sorry, not five pieces, four pieces is the four set effect. So if you like a four set effect a lot, you could go that route. Um, I believe Obsidian Gear, I'm not sure, but I believe it's equivalent to, the T1 is like equivalent to, uh, was it Magnificent or Ethereum? Let's take a look. It's like in between. So it's not quite Ethereum. But it's definitely not magnificent at the same time, so it's right in the middle. So at this point in the game, you have your full um, GHA gear, you have your full uh, Artificer's Magnificent accessories, you have your Hassle weapon. You're just at the point where you're farming money and deciding whether you want to go um, crafted gear versus uh, obsidian gear. And of course they are both crafted, but that's kind of how I want to categorize them for this video. Now let's talk a little bit more about obsidian gear. Now the obsidian gear is uh, pretty streamlined. It's not too complicated to understand. There's a little bit of intricacies and a reason why you want uh, might want to have leather work a higher level. I think it's been a debate in the Arc Age community that um, the higher you have leather work, the more chance you have at, um, for example, this T1 obsidian jerkin. Or let's go ahead and talk about uh, my helmet actually. You see how my helmet is an arcane T1? Now, if I were to get all the mats and come over here, let's say I have all these mats and I'm ready to craft this to T2, this does have a chance to increase a level. So it would be able to go from arcane to heroic, for example. And uh, it's still not quite known if it's, uh, or I don't quite know if it's um, related exactly to your um, life skill proficiency. But nonetheless, max life skill, zero life skill, it still has a chance to increase. So what most people do is um, they get all the mats for their T1 Obsidian. They craft their T1 Obsidian and they try and take this as far as it can go. So at this point in the game, you would uh, be taking it to Celestial. And um, before you equip it, because remember, Obsidian once again binds to your character, you want to try and enhance it to around um to around either divine or epic depending how lucky you get with your regrading hopefully you get an epic but that's like <laughs> it's pretty hard to do but uh divine is very serviceable as well so after that after you get to divine you go ahead and start farming the mats to crafting the t2 crafting the t3 and at this point you can either equip it or you can sell it um of course since this is a gearing progression guide you're probably um wondering what gear and what to get, so you'll probably equip it, but that's pretty much that. Um, T1 to T3 is pretty simple. 
Um, T1 and T3 Obsidian Gear, you'll pretty much be farming the Golden Ruins area for the mats. So the Topaz drops in um, Golden Ruins, the Bone Chips drop in Golden Ruins, the Spell Gems also drop in Golden Ruins. Pretty simple. The Mana Whips, you'll be uh, buying gear off the Marketplace, something uh, I believe it's Magnificent and higher. Um, it could be Illustrious, I'm not sure, I don't remember. Um, nonetheless, they'll be in the market. I believe there's some already on the market in the CBT. So you can always just come here. This is just to get a gauge of what the price looks like right now. Obviously, subject to change since this is just a CBT. But this is how the market would look like when the game is finally out. And this is how um, you would go about crafting your obsidian gear. The spell gems and the bone chips are a little bit harder to come by. This is where the grind comes in. It is pretty grindy. Um, I myself in the CBT... Uh, to avoid burnout. I think I got like... I was farming some mats and got like 36 and I was like, yeah, kind of done. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. But uh, with launch of the game, of course, since you get to keep everything, more motivation. But this is how you would be going about your Obsidian Gear. Now, Obsidian Gear is a little bit special when you get to T4. Now, T4, let's go ahead and use um the Obsidian Leather Fist as example. This is another point um, where player choice comes in. Now, for the fists, I believe it's pretty simple. Since um, the equip effect is melee critical damage and the other fists are range critical damage, it's pretty obvious which one you want to take depending on the class you're playing. If you're playing melee, obviously, you want to take the shadow. If you're playing range, evanescent. But once again, this is where player choice comes in. And when you're crafting T4, T4 is a little bit special. You are farming a library. And with library, every mob has a chance to drop these mats. And when you go even further up, and let's say uh, T5 Obsidian, this is when you start needing special drops from the bosses. For example, the Silent Shadow Fists, you would need a Alexander's Case. And this comes from, I forgot which floor Alexander's on, but... um. He's on one of the floors in the library, one of the side rooms when you're traversing floor through floor, the little break room. And you would just go and take a group and fight him. And eventually you'll be strong enough, maybe, <laughs> to fight him by yourself. But uh, when you're gearing up, you take a group, you go ahead and fight him, and you go ahead and bid for the case. And uh, that's how you end up crafting a T5 and T6 gear. With uh, special bosses, like for example, T6 takes like a Red Dragon Spinal Ridge, so you would have to do Red Dragon, and then uh, you would also have to do, um, kill Glenn in Library, things like that. Um, around the point, you're kind of just focused on T3 Obsidian. So once again, for gear, you're pretty much farming Golden Ruins, and uh, for weapons, for weapons, I think it's primarily just. Um, Primarily like Diamond Shores and the like um, regular warrior areas like Exolock, Calmland, Zumari. But what you primarily need is the Malevolent Obsidian, and I highly suggest you grind in Diamond Shores. And uh, specifically these areas in the map, the, your bunker areas. And I want to talk a little bit right now why you want to grind the bunker areas. So these bunker areas have a chance when the, the big bunker is up. Um, you want to make sure that the big bunker is not up in your area. Uh, you can grind either the east or west side, doesn't matter. Obviously PvP might ensue if you're on the wrong side, and you gotta be wary of um, this lodestone distance, because it will shoot you if you're not on the um, same faction. But uh, you want to grind these mobs. These crabs, drag work. You want to make sure these are the mobs like in the area, because they also have a chance to drop a synthesis shard, which I'll talk about later in the video. That's how you uh, upgrade your underwear and your cloak. But um, these these mobs um, also drop the uh, obsidian, uh, ominous obsidian, I believe it was called. A uh, malevolent obsidian, sorry. They drop the uh, malevolent obsidian. Now, weapons are a little bit special where you need special drops as well. Um, their special drops are things like Tainted Jewel and X-Lock. These are kind of hard to come by. Um, even the Haunted Obsidian, which is a blue drop, uh, it took me a while just to get one in the CBT. And that's also acquired in Sun Gold Fields. So, all around, 
you kind of want to farm. Um, usually people like to farm their weapon first, but in this case, I would suggest farming a probably farming golden ruins first and getting your gear up to par since golden ruins drops all the stuff for your um for your gear. But you could go for like an easy, fast, uh, like T3 weapon. It's not too awful. But, um, it's not uh, all in one place, sadly. You would have to be, uh, traversing from place to place, which is unfortunate. And some of these drops are kind of hard to get. But, other than that, that's pretty much how you get, um, how you go about gearing for Obsidian. Very simple, not too complicated. Obviously, the hardest part is the regrading. <laughs> That's a uh, RNG it always, and uh, I highly suggest that you don't take your gear past T1 until you get a good enhancement that you like. Of course, I'd um, I encourage you to try and go for epic. It's not realistic, but uh, nonetheless, I you should try for it if you get a divine. I would say go ahead and craft up that divine to T2 and just start rocking that divine. And even if uh, all you can get is celestial, celestial is fine as well. Uh, just get it up to T3. I wouldn't suggest taking it up to T4. T4 is quite a resource uh, commitment with the library drops. And then, of course, going past T4 is even more of a commitment. Some very um, expensive drops. Um, very hard con content to do. Well, not very hard. It just requires gear. But that is it for obsidian gearing. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about crafted, such as like a uh, delphinad and ionad. Um, right after you get your um, your GHA gear, if you were keeping up with um, labor in loving up your life skill, or for some reason you're making a lot of money and you decide you want to buy this gear off the marketplace, I would suggest starting at Delphinad, and I don't even know if Delphinads will even be on the market in the, like around this area. It'll probably be only like Magnificent, maybe some Ethereums if people kept um, focusing their labor into crafting. But um, it'll probably be around the point right after, like towards um, Aurora opening up. Um, the market will probably be around the point having some Magnificence and some Ethereums. And once again, Ethereum is technically a little bit better than T1 Obsidian. And um, Magnificent is technically a little bit worse. That's not too much of a noticeable difference. The only difference is, of course, the, the equip versus set effects. Now, um, there's not really much to say about crafted gear. It's not too hard. If you're buying it, but if you're crafting it, it's insanely hard. <laughs> it's a lot of mats you'll have to be using. Fine leather takes small seed oil and just regular leather, so you have to be farming your land with leather and doing a, I believe it's cross continental packs, to um to get the small seed oil. I do not remember. Yes, charcoal stabilizers, rice and corn, just to craft some seed oils. Um, in my opinion, I think crafted gear is like, um, it's less than obsidian, just not by stat wise, but just for the hassle it is. But if you're like, if you have like the hack to making money and you like just want to start buying gear and not really worry about, um, not worry about like the grinding part, um, you can just start trying to get some ethereum gear maybe some even some delphinad gear some crazy life skillers will be on the server crafting a delphinad gear who knows and that's the basis for gearing and this is a uh, this is kind of the end game gearing with the uh of course crafted versus obsidian that's pretty much what you'll be farming for the rest of the game not too complicated it's not Haram gear where you're just farming dailies and the gear is pretty much given to you. You still have to work for your gear a little bit in this in Dark Age Classic. But that is the gear system pretty much in summary. There is some special things that I would like to point out, such as um, 
cloaks and underwear. And I believe costumes are in this version as well. Uh, let's go ahead and check the cash shop for that. I think I remember seeing the um hmm. the melee costumes. Oh, it's actually not in the cash shop. It is in the guild shop. Yes, okay, so melee basic costumes, magic, and range and healing. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the guild shop. Um being in the guild is very important in this version of Arcage. Uh you have your guild dailies that give you prestige. And the uh, prestige is very important because it allows you to buy very important items from the prestige shop. I suggest the first one you focus is the cloak that you want to get, because when you get a cloak, let's go ahead and look at the synthesis. Looking at the synthesis interface, you see that the cloaks are all main stat based, and sadly it's RNG based on which main stat you get. And the reason why I was talking about why you want to farm your bunker areas in Diamond Shores is because that is what drops these synthesis shards to level up your cloak. Thankfully, the cloak is very uh, streamlined and very easy. You get the drop, you slap it in here, you get XP, done. But sadly, the effects are all RNG. Now, since the cloak is just main stats, it's not too bad in RNG and let's go ahead and take a look at what um <clears throat> what some people's cloaks look like I believe some people have um some cloaks leveled up already here we go and a divine cloak um this is a pretty decent cloak for dark runner strength agility intelligence not awful uh you don't want stamina ideally as your third stats dark runner but this is what it looks like a little bit you see that um he has a divine, he ranked up to the divine. And you have um just some just pretty good basic stats. Strength, agility, intelligence, etc. The cloak's not too insane. Uh I want to talk a little bit more about the uh underwear as well. Now the underwear is a little bit more crazy. You get crazy effects. Uh backstab melee damage, melee attack, his defense. Magic defense, max health. I believe there's a few more stats the higher you go. Um, but since this is a melee undergarment, these are the stats that you would be able to roll for melee, which is really nice. And uh, actually, these should be all the effects. I think I'm thinking about the costume, which I'm going to talk about next. And before I forget, the there's two ways to get the undergarments. There's loyalty tokens, which in CBT, it'll only take 100 loyalty tokens. I'm not sure if this will be the same for the launch of the classic. I'm just showing you what they have in what they have so far. And then I believe it is Guild of Stars as well. Yes. So you can use 200 Guild of Stars as well. And you also get the, uh, yes, so they're wrapped. So you get to make the choice. You don't have to worry about buying the wrong one. When you right click it, it gives you a choice melee range, magic healing, and make sure you pick accordingly to, uh, to your class. So with that said, I want to talk a little bit more about the problem child in the room, and that is the costumes. <laughs> the costumes are, from what I remember, very insane. They're actually ridiculous. And uh, this is more of an endgame thing, but after you pick up your cloak, I would pretty much suggest using your points to get the costume next. Pretty much a no-brainer. Those are a little bit different to rank up. Sadly, I don't have a costume in CBT, but I can talk about it from memory. Um, costumes are a little bit different. The Synthium shards or the Synthesis shards do not drop from Diamond Shores. These shards drop from the Greater Dungeons and later on Miss Song Summit, the Aria Dungeon. And I believe, and let's go ahead and check that, I think Alchemy can craft these shards. Yes, they can. So let's go ahead and take a look at these shards. Now, um, as you can see, you see grades rare to arcane. What does that mean? Well, that means, sadly, <laughs> that um, you can only use the rare shard from upgrading your costume from rare to arcane. And uh, kind of sucks. Um, these shards are kind of hard to come by. 
Um, you do get, once again you get them in the greater dungeons and your dungeon runs in general. So uh, at this point in the game, since you have two greater dungeons and you'll probably be decently geared to slap them with a party, you want to just run right through them. And I believe the shards only drop from the bosses in greater dungeons. And uh, I also forgot to mention they drop from world bosses like CR and GR. So you want to make sure you're attending CR and GR. And when Miss Song Summit comes out, it'll be dropping from the mobs. So later in the game, it'll be a little bit easier to acquire these. But at the beginning of the game, which you shouldn't really be focusing on a costume anyways. But it's nice just to have that grind go on in the background. You'll be getting a few of these from Greater Dungeons and possibly CR and GR. But this is where the RNG is like turned up to level like 100. The costume has quite a bit of stats. And once again, of course, you pick depending on your class, melee, healer. Um, what was that? Melee, healer, magic, range, all that good stuff. And uh, what this means is that the stats, thankfully, will be kind of catered towards what those classes use, but there are, of course, some sucky stats that they include in there. I believe for each costume, there is around like 11 to 12 stat lines you can choose or have. And I believe uh, I'm trying to remember how many um, stat lines you can have. But I think it's around five or six. Let's go ahead and check that out. Yeah, so around five, you can have five, um, five stat lines and rerolling these stats and all that stuff. I'm just going to leave that end game since this is just a basic gear progression guide, but this is just like the end of end game. So I wouldn't worry about this too much. I would still pick it up second after getting your cloak. Or you can pick it up even a little bit later if you wish, if there's some other stuff you want to buy in here, such as like um, the mount, for example. The tiger mount or the panther is pretty cool. Um, kind of <laughs> a big cost, 2000. The pioneer earrings are all right as well. They're not too bad. You get magic defense pen if you're a mage. You get focus, another good stat, stam. But I would pretty much pick it up second just to have it on. And start working towards it and then you can focus on the other stuff later and uh in my opinion i forgot to mention the loot and flute um we'll go ahead and go back to solace to look at that so over here back in solace or if you're the west side one of your towns that has a proven warrior workbench there's one in halsey for both sides if you can't find it there is the proven warrior instrument and uh for your warrior medals, you can just craft any one of these for your class. Uh, for example, I play Dark Runner, so I would want the Anthem of Battle Rage since it increases the battle focus level by one, which is nice. There's one for Shadow Play, there's one for each tree, pretty much. And this is a good one to craft for having in the meantime since it just gives you a big amount of your main stat. I would upgrade this to like Celestial, leave it Celestial for a while, no reason trying to break it. I mean, I guess you can get a Divine one if you wish for more Luna Gem sockets, but Celestial is good enough. Um, loot and Flute, you can go Obsidian as well. Obsidian can also be pretty big since it gives you magic defense and then the Flute gives you um, physical defense. Really good for healers, the Flute, I would say, and not only that, the Flute also restores mana. So when you're um when you're farming and PVEing and dungeons and stuff like that, you can always just restore your mana. There is also some special armors. Yes, this. So uh for example, the guards. Pretty popular choice for dark runners. Instead of using the obsidian guards, if there were there even obsidian guards, I don't think there actually were any obsidian guards. Obsidian guards. Yeah, there's no obsidian guards. So um if you choose to go obsidian, your guards and your belt are like a flex, um, a flex slot. And what many people used to do is come to this warrior bench and pretty much fill it up with, uh, 
fill it in with these slots. The Dark Warrior's Guards are an excellent choice. You get backstab melee damage increased by 7% and focus. Very huge. I used this back in the day. Uh, pretty... Not too complicated to get. This is um, Dark Watcher Jerkin, all the Dark Watcher gear. And uh, just some Wind Spirit leather. Not too hard to come by. Um, I believe some of these... Um, some of these use like boss drops, like CR, GR, like Reckless Captain. I forgot which one is uh, the CR and GR belt. But these use um, the boss drops from that, so you'd have to bid on the marketplace to get them. Or just win the drop doing CR and GR. But these are some very good, uh, very good choices to have because of the additional effect. Now you could always just choose the easy route and buy a... Uh, an Ethereum or something like that off the marketplace, but these are very good to fill in those slots if you're using Obsidian gear. I would highly suggest coming here and taking some of these. I believe um, one of the best was like the Cloth Sash. No, it was the... Uh, what was the active? There was an active one where uh, you like grip someone in the air. It was pretty cool. Ah, I think it, it was the Cloth Slash. So it uh, binds the target up to 25 meters away for two seconds. And just holds them in place. Which is nice for a little bit. So it's not an awful active. A lot of people use this to meme on people. <laughs> a lot of Cloth players. Just a pretty cool skill. But definitely uh, check these out. See what you like. See if it works for your class. And if not, you can always just buy... Um, you can always just do dungeon ones from uh, the dungeons, like GHA and whatever, and see what effects you like. And uh, always just buy it from the marketplace. But that just, uh, that definitely covers it for gearing. I believe that is everything. Let me know if I missed anything, put it in the comments, uh, just to help other people out. And that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this uh, helped you out a little bit, understanding how Arcage Classics gearing system will be. If you are coming from Unchained, it's very different. It is not uh, the Haram gearing. And uh, it's a lot more up to player choice, which I like a lot. It's very, uh, it's more creative. You'll see a lot more, um, well, everyone playing Arcage is probably a meta slave, so you might not see <laughs> different stuff, but uh, you might see uh, some different builds, some different um, weapons being used, and things like that. But I highly suggest you uh, go ahead and explore, look up some um, some older videos from other content creators that uh, explained like how they like to gear their class. Um, if it's popular, I could make like a like a Dark Runner video gearing, like how I geared my Dark Runner and what I plan for Classic because I always used to be a dual wheel Dark Runner, but uh, two handed was just pretty much always better. I like in this version that two-handed can't parry. As of right now, two-handed can't parry uh, arrows, which is really nice. So it kind of felt like dual wield, like in this version of Arcage, has a place in the meta since at the beginning of the game, and just playing the CBT and doing the the stress tests. A lot of people are playing Archer on like the other side of my faction, which is the west side, and uh, I feel like dual wield will be a lot better in open world. But uh, that's a different topic for another day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, leave a dislike, subscribe, and hope you guys have an excellent day. Take it easy. Peace out.